What is up, Fantasyland? We are back for a special Friday night edition, and football's back. I see Mahomes on the screen. I see Kyle Murray. It's finally here, guys. Football here is here. The excitement is here. A lot of us have been drafting this entire offseason, some more than others, more than we'd like to admit. But what have the Sharps been doing? What have the elite of the fantasy world been doing? When do they start drafting? We're going to get into that tonight and a lot more with one of the most decorated, if not the most decorated fantasy player on the planet. You guys know how we do it in the district. Tonight is no different. Grab your popcorn. We about to dance. Let's go. District, you know the Pope listens. Dynasty, our religion, for the blokes missing on all of these trades, on all of these plays, on all of these grades. By the end of the day, y'all getting played. So, what you gonna do next? Try to fill up that flex. Send the homie a text. That trash off is the best. You try to make it complex. Then they text you back. Now, all of a sudden, they don't make any sense. <laughs> Broaden your horizons, boy. Dynasty's not for the Simons, boy. Trades not for consignment, boy. Respect your opponent, y'all some piranhas, boy. This my advice from me to you. Open up your cute little podcast queue. Search up G-O-A-T District, my dude. Pop it in your ear, man. Y'all know what to do. It's the... And I always be traded. And I always be traded. And I always be traded. Y'all try to betray them, but first you gotta bait them. Bait them. Fish. What is up, Fantasyland? I am back with two of the best, two of my favorite. Dan, how exciting is it to have football on in the background again? I got Mahomes, Murray. I mean, I'm pitching a tent here, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, doing great. Excited to get back into football. It's been uh, close to a week since I've even really been able to look. But I had a, had a few days uh, up in God's country uh, on a canoe trip with my girls and then uh, anniversary yesterday. So just starting to kind of get myself back into football and, uh, and, and, and loving it. We got preseason going. It's, it's fantastic. Congr- congrats on the anniversary, man. That's uh that's a serious uh, accomplishment, man. It, and, uh, and anything exciting, any bears or anything on that, on that trip? Cause it, it, I know you go deep into the woods. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing super exciting. We didn't uh, have any megafauna sightings um, other than a moose in a parking lot before we even entered. <laughs> <laughs> Once we got into the woods, we didn't see another moose, but uh, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Nice, so, nice. And and speaking so. of moose, no, I'm joking. How are you, Theo? Theo, tonight, how pumped are you for tonight, man? We were talking earlier. Tonight's a big one, man. I'm very stoked for tonight. Um, we've had some tremendous guests. Um, and I think that, you know, we're, we're going to close out August right. Um, we have, you know, th- uh, we had Dwayne McFarlane on last week. It was tremendous. Um, and now we have, uh, you know, three more guests in August to really close it out. And, and I'm, I'm fired up. Um <laughs> I have two weeks. I'm two weeks away from tonight. Two weeks from now, I'll be drafting live again in New York City in the NFFC drafts. And then uh, two weeks from Sunday, Dan and I will be splitting our first uh, FFPC main event team. So we're we're in crunch time now. Tonight, this is the end of August. It's no joke. It's it's time to make some money and uh, and win some leagues. Nice, nice, and that I, I can't wait to hear about that. I'm so jealous. I wish uh, I wish the travel situation was different right now for me to go south of the border, but. Uh, you guys are going to represent the district real good, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get some some little video clips down there, some interviews. Maybe we'll do a show. Who knows? We'll, we'll figure something out. We don't know. Absolutely. Yep. All right, yep. guys. Tonight's, tonight's a big show. We're doing this on a Friday night. You guys know we don't usually jam on a Friday night, but tonight is a very special guest. Smash the like right now if you're watching Smash the subscribe. Make sure you're on top of this. We're bringing you the VIPs. Tonight is no different. I, You know what, Theo? Do you want the resume or do we let, do we let him? I'm thinking I don't want to mess up the resume because the resume is just, I said, it, I said it in the tweet, man. It is mind-blowing. The consistency 
and the amount of wins that this man has taken down. So I don't know. You want to take it? You want to let? You want to? How are we going to no, do this? Sure. Prop, we sure. Do so so um, we're 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 fortunate to have uh, Chad Schrader on tonight. Uh, he's the most accomplished uh, fantasy football player in the country. If you play high stakes fantasy football and you see Chad in your league, you know you're going up against a, a heavy hitter. Uh, he's won pretty much every competition you can think of. Uh, he's an NFFC Hall of Famer. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're just just happy to be able to pick his brain tonight in, in the district. Chad, welcome to the district, brother. We're, we're happy to have you tonight. We're, we're real excited for this one. Hey, thanks for the invite. It's a fun little distraction from the draft grind I've been on lately. <laughs> I, I, I will say that Dwayne is a very, very tough act to follow, though. Yep, no doubt, yeah, we, no doubt. We, no, we told Dwayne uh, you were coming on a week after him, and he was fired up to listen to it as well. So Dwayne came on twice this summer. Um, we have the utmost respect for, for Dwayne's uh, ability as a uh, – as a player and as an analyst, he's, he's been an unbelievable guest, but uh, he was fired up to, to listen to you as well, Chad. Not as much as I like listening to his stuff. Uh, he's so, uh, his stuff is just the best out there, I think. But No, I agree on that. So tonight we're going to hit, we're going to do our usual rapid fire through it, through some quick NFL news. Uh, we're like Dan said, man, we are going to take advantage. We're going to pick this man's brain tonight. We're going to talk redraft, high stakes. We're going to talk, talk tournaments, even go get into auctions. So, but before we get into that, Chad, give us, give us a quick idea of, you know, how you got introduced to fantasy football, you know, li little, uh, what, what your travel has been through fantasy land. Okay, so um, out of college, uh, I live in Omaha, so I went to school at Nebraska. Um, and then I got a job at Ameritrade uh, out of college and got was when the market crashed around 2000. I, they laid off a bunch of mid-management, and I was part of that. And um, I didn't like the job anyways, and, and uh, I – had about two thousand dollars to my name at that point, and um, started gambling. And, and uh, the Bartman Florida Marlin year, I, I had the Marlins at one hundred and fifty to one to win the National League, and three hundred to one to win the World Series, and that gave me a bankroll to work with. And then off we go. But uh, then, then the offshore industry. I, I was a prop betting specialist back when nobody really did it. Um, made a lot of money but uh, and then they closed that down when they closed down poker um, and um, I decided to try fantasy football just to uh, see if I could supplement my income and I had a big year right out of the gate um, almost won a million bucks uh, it's a bad bad story but we, we we don't oh, mind yeah. hearing it. Okay. We don't mind hearing the uh, the express version of, of that million dollar story. Okay, so in two thousand eight, there was a, a new contest called the Fantasy Football Open Championships. Uh, it was around a hundred and fifty dollars a team. Uh, there was ten. There were ten team leagues. You had to win your league to move on to the cut lines in weeks eleven through eventually seventeen. I did 20 of them and I got, I made it, I somehow got two to the final 15. They flew us all to Bellagio and it's a one week shootout between the 15 teams, million dollars up top. Um, so to make a long story short, I ran really hot and lucky in the early games. Um, and I had this thing by the balls uh, going into the going late afternoon. Didn't go great, but good enough. I, I um, Basically, uh, I was winning a million if D'Angelo Williams uh, in a timeshare with Jonathan Stewart oh. did, not, did, did not score 28 points in non-PPR. <sighs> I remember that frustration with those he two. Did. He did. Oh, man. Jonathan Stewart got hurt on his first carry of the game. <sighs> and four touchdowns later, it was, uh, it was a miserable uh, experience. But – Dirty. Oh, I shouldn't say the experience was miserable, but seeing uh, that kind of life-changing money slip through your hands 
second was a hundred thousand. Um, so the big difference, uh, the one highlight is we, uh, got to party after that Sunday night game with Jerry Rice and the owners at the Bellagio club till about four or five in the morning. So that, we uh, drank, drowned our sorrows after D'Angelo's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that wow. Carolina running back court did, I think, break a lot of hearts. That, but that that that's definitely a heartbreak. So, why don't you describe for those who maybe don't know as closely what, what how would you describe your style? You know, your style of play. I guess I, I kind of ask this to all our guests. What's your general approach? I guess. To fantasy are you aggressive are you are you a very active guy are you kind of a, a more patient player what, how would you describe your your approach to the game um it's not as organized as most i'll just put, show uh, i don't know if this will be able to be seen but this is a sheet i use for every draft um can that be seen yeah just put it up yeah. a little higher a little higher okay, there, you there you go there you go so it's oh, in yeah. columns by positions um so it's not an overall ADP list, but it's uh, in uh, basically 80, uh, a, an adjusted ADP, I call it. I, I uh, Taking into consideration my thoughts a little bit and uh, other smart drafters' thoughts as I see them choosing this guy over that guy. Um, and so it's a combination of ADP and guys that respect's opinion that go into it. And then I... I uh, Generally, just understand the different formats I'm playing and how they the positions go off the board, and I try to every pick find what seems to be the sweet spot, what position is the, the sweet spot at this time, um, and also kind of looking forward to what's going to be the sweet spot the next time. But um, that's it's very simple. Um, I'm more I, I'm willing to take a lot more guys than most of my peers are. But certain guys will have to fall a little bit further than others for me to be willing to invest. All right. Well, we'll get a little we'll get a little deeper into that uh, as we get through this this show. Um, this is not on, on script, but before we get into so, some quick NFL rapid fire, we were talking really quick about your current setup. You said you had you have four live drafts coming up. And I and I ask you a question. I just I, I'm sure if I was a, someone in the audience, I'd want to know this. I'm curious, uh, and and this is what I asked you: Can you, when you're drafting four live drafts, like what's your setup like? Do you have like multiple screens? Do you have one big one? Do you have like just your regular laptop screen? I'm just curious to know how you approach four live drafts at once, and is that your norm? Is that usually where you're at doing live drafts, not not slow slow people? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Every night I'll be doing almost from seven until midnight or one in the morning. I'll be doing uh, most of the night. I'll be doing between three and five drafts. Uh, I try to avoid five unless it's only going to be for 15 minutes or so projected. Animal. I love it. I love it, man. I can see them all. And then I, I have an order and then I have my sheets on top of each other. And then move on to the next one, we'll cross off names. And um, and I, I need to do a better job of getting my, on the different sites, getting my uh, my ADP list kind of imported onto the sites. So if I have to auto pick, it's going to have a guy that at least uh, is somewhat reasonable. So, All right. Before we get into the goodness, Guys, obviously Chad's gonna drop a lot of goodness tonight, and we got a full house, man. We got we got a lot of activity live right now. Get active in the in the comments, guys. Any questions you have for Chad, drop them in there. Any comments, and you know, help help the channel out a bit. Just all you got to do is smash the like, smash the subscribe, get you caught up on all the goodness we drop. Theo talked about the VIP lists that just keep coming, and tonight's no different, man. We bring one of the best at one of the most crucial times of the season as we approach. Guys, let's get into a quick, you know, we started doing this a little while, while back. We're going to do some NFL rapid fire, looking at news headlines. We're going to go a little specific. Chad, I'll go to you, obviously, uh, as our guest tonight. Antonio Brown gets into a little scrap. Give us a little take on on, on our boy AB. 
is he someone that you were thinking of drafting? Does this change anything? Just just your quick thoughts on on the he was he was getting pretty popular and his EDP was rising quite a bit, uh, especially in the FFPC world. It, it, it has risen. Um, you know, I update my sheet every day to try to keep it current. But he was, uh, I was finding myself. Uh, he, he was always checked a few notches, a few pegs on every sheet every time. I wasn't keeping up fast enough, but so I don't own him very much so far. But I don't, I don't mind him at all. Um, the, the problem I have though is, uh, well, I'll probably end up a little bit light on on all three of those guys, uh, Evan, Godwin, and and Brown. I mean, that's a lot of mouths to feed, um, and they're going to have a respectable passing uh, running back to throw to now, Geo. Um, he Brady always likes his tight ends. So that's, if anything, I, I find myself uh, seeing Brady as an acceptable option where I wait on quarterback more so than, than you know, if, if those guys are all going to do even remotely close to what their ADP suggests, then Brady's going to be really good. I mean, yeah, Brady. I'm trying to look at so Brady right now going in the eighth round in the last couple of days in the uh, the best ball tournament on the FFPC. Shout out to Ricky Ortiz saying you're the man, Chad. We love your transparency, um, and that you know that's what we appreciate here on the district. So we appreciate you sharing all the goodness tonight. Is there? I mean, you mentioned uh, you know the run. Is there anyone that you you really like? Is Geo kind of that value guy that you like in this offense? Or is there someone else that we haven't talked about? I wish I wouldn't have brought him up, but yeah, I do like him as a. That's my favorite Buccaneer besides Brady right now. Same, Same. I like and and I find Gronk can be a nice value in tight end premiums where he's falling, but Gronk and and Geo have been my favorite targets uh, in this offense. If we go over to New England QB competition, uh, actually, guys, do you guys have anything to add? Sorry, man, I know Dan, you're you're a big AB guy and Theo, um, you know, someone that we talked a lot about in the DMs. Do you guys have anything to add? It to, to the Tampa Bay receiver before we go over to New England? I think, no, I, you, look some, go ahead, I, I, I think for me, basically, uh, you know, I, I like the fact that AB is cheaper than uh, Evans and Godwin. Um, you know, so for that reason, I'm definitely in on him. Uh, but, you know, it, any, any of the three can be good. I want to have some exposure to all of them, uh, you know, because if any one of them gets hurt, I mean, it just makes it, you know, that much more. That's um, true. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I definitely want to make sure I've got some of that exposure. Like Chad, I'm a little bit wary of how many mouths there are to feed. And, uh, and also like Chad, I've been big into Brady uh, basically the entire off season, because it, you know, as you said, if, if all those guys do what everybody's expecting them to do, then uh, Brady is definitely undervalued right now, even still, I mean, he's risen and he's still undervalued. So uh, I'm, I'm in on him as well. Damn. What about you, Theo? No, I, I agree with Dan. I agree with Chad. Um, you know, it's a team you want exposure to. Uh, they return all 22 starters. Um, I think that offense is going to be a lot crisper than we saw at the beginning of last season. Um, it's They have a ton of weapons. And I've drafted a very good amount of AB um, in both NFFC and FFPC now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's priced right. Um, seventh round, eighth round. I got him a little later to start out the draft season. But, uh yeah, I, I want to have as much exposure to Tampa Bay as I can. Um, I agree there's there's some concerns um, about, you know, the mouths to feed, but I think that offense is going to be high. If we go over to New England, Chad, starting with the quarterbacks, obviously they just played uh, this week. So, you know, we love to react, right, to anything that, that happens on the field, whether they're third string, first string, doesn't matter. The QB situation in New England – What's your approach on it? Do you have a favorite? Is it something you're not touching? Do you think these guys are value? Um, my, my take on it is uh, the whole offense in general, you know, I, I've never really seen a situation like it where not a single Patriot is going before where Damian Harris is going. Um, somebody's going to move the ball on the team. I mean, you know, <laughs> you can really have the whole – all the candidates very cheaply in drafts and something's going to work out, whether it's the tight ends or Jacoby Myers or I don't know about that. Um, 
but I like Harris probably the, the most right now. Um, and I think James White becomes more attractive uh, if uh, if Mac Jones ended up being playing quarterback. I think he would check down a little bit more. But Newton surprised me. He looked good last night. Um, he, he was throwing the ball with a, a little bit more velocity than I was expecting. It, it looked, he, but it never seems to last. It's, I don't know what, but I was shocked to see he looked pretty good. Uh, Jacoby Myers has always been his favorite target, so – um, that's just something to keep in mind. And I'm pretty confident Newton's going to be starting week one by what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, I think Newton, you're kind of looking for him in the in the earlier this season. Hey, Dan? Yeah, yeah, I think Newton's definitely going to be the guy early. Um, you know, my my main concern with, uh, you know, the, the pass catchers and the runners is with Newton in there. Uh, you know, how, how much is he going to be stealing from them? But as Chad said, they're also cheap that it's really not that big of a deal to, um, you know, to take a stab at one or two of them uh, in any given draft and, you know, and just kind of see what happens, you know, because a lot of those guys are going like in the, you know, 13th round plus. So there's just, you know, if, if you whiffed, you move on, uh, you know, you got to have some guys to drop to be able to, to add guys, uh, you know, as they, they start exposing themselves early in the season. Um, Theo, what do you think on that? Yeah, I think I agree with Chad that Cam looked good. He looked really good. Um, but I do think it's going to be hard to keep uh, Jones off the field uh, the entire season. I think we'll see a switch at, at some point unless unless they get off to just a tremendous start. Um, I thought I thought Jones flashed as well. I think there's some things he's doing well. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a – the offense has a lot of question marks, but um, there is some value to add there. I think shots on the tight ends – um, some Damian Harris. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting offense. And I think that if we do see a switch, um, I, I think Harris might even become even a little bit more of a value because Cam's such a threat around the goal line that you might see, you know, Harris getting those goal line looks um, if it is Jones. So, yeah, it's uh, I don't think it'll be as bad an offense as people thought it was going to be in, you know, in June when we started drafting and people were, like, trying to avoid all Patriots. I think uh, – are coming around to the fact that I think they'll be pretty confident this year. I have one more thing to bring up if you're done. Um, mm -hmm. uh, on the on the topic of Harris, um, you know, I, I, I you can't get too caught up in, in a one preseason game. Um, I learned that a very hard way when uh, I drafted a Trey Burton after watching them feature him throwing the ball about ten <laughs> times and a half. But, um, yeah, but anyway, the point here I'm trying to get at is uh, last night in the game. Um, you know, typically these New England backs, when they get the ball fake, they they haven't tr predominantly ran that route where they stop five yards down the field as a check down. They they seem to stay in the block or whatever. They never, but last night that all changed. Um, Michelle caught a few of those and he never caught any passes. Like one was a screen pass, but um, a few of them were those exact kind where, you know, the running back just sets up camp five yards down the field and they checked it to him. And Harris can catch the ball. People just don't realize that, but he, he could, he can catch the ball. He's um, not quite great at it, but he's not a stone handed guy by any means. So I just want to throw that in there. They, their offense might change a little bit from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to ask just because uh, I wanted to move to Carolina before we we get into some you know some strategy stuff here. Um, but the the you talked about Michelle. Any interest in the rookie? I know he's he you know he fired right. But is it a mistake for for fantasy land to kind of react too too much to to what we saw last night? Um, he, he looks good, uh, but Belichick won't stand for stupid mistakes. And I, I, I don't think he's a thinking man's player. Um, he had a fumble in the game. Um, that won't sit well with Belichick at all. Um, and uh, I think that you're probably going to see, I'm anxious to do drafts tonight later. Um, I bet you he's going to jump about seven or eight spots on the running back list after that game last night. 
and I, I uh, it'll probably price me out is what my thoughts are. All right, guys, one more Carolina. Dan, I'll go to you first and then, and then we'll, and then we'll go back to Chad just cause we talk about Carolina often. Uh, you and I own some teams and, and we've got pieces DJ Moore, ha, you know, there's speak of his back issues. Are you concerned with that? And bring Darnold into the conversation. Just curious to know where he fits. Just because I, I built uh, uh, one of my one, one of these hundred Ks uh, that I'm building right now. I've got um, Trevor Lawrence and Darnold as my quarterback. So I, I'm curious to know Darnold uh, with the weapons that he's got there. Do you think there's hope? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. I think he's actually uh, better than than a lot of people probably would think he is. That, that's just my opinion. But um, and he also is fairly mobile. I mean, I, I thought we love to use four little words on here. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're good. good. Kids, are, kids are in bed. Kids are in bed. Go ahead. Go ahead. Came, uh, game uh, a showdown. I was grinding last year because I didn't play full season last year. Uh, much at all maybe a couple teams but um with the COVID I was I was real worried about it so but he, he broke off like a 40 or 50 yard touchdown running a game so he, he's got some legs um and I think his the offense is a little better design than what he was dealing with the last uh, couple years down in Carolina and he's got good weapons I mean I think Darnold's a tremendous best ball quarterback Yep. Yep. I would agree with that. And, uh, you know, I'll take any discount I can get on more right now. Um, you know, I just, I, I love the talent. Um, hopefully it's nothing serious. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm also coming into it without, you know, having spent kind of almost a week away from, uh, a lot of the news. So I'm really just getting caught back up myself. Uh, you know, so I don't, I don't want to throw that out as advice that anybody, should be following because uh, you might be up on it more than I am. But, uh, you know, in, unless there's reason to believe it's something really serious, I'll take the discount on more, definitely. And uh, give me all the Terrace Marshall. Uh, I've been on that train all off season. So yeah. it's, it's unfortunate that uh, everybody else is jumping on, but uh, that's that's my okay. guy there. It is. He's getting more expensive, Dan, but I still can't stop drafting him. I, still, <laughs> I just drafted him again in another draft that I did earlier today. Um, like, like a knob, I tried to do a live, my last uh, entry, I tried to do a live stream. I spoke for over an hour. This is embarrassing, but whatever, man. I spoke for Earl, Chad, just to show you the intelligence you're dealing with here. I spoke for over an hour to myself, <laughs> for, forgot to unmute the little button there, uh, while I was talking. And then thanks to Anna Jimenez, who's one of our, uh, one of our amazing, uh, audience. She's like, is there supposed to be audio on this in the chat? I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I just, I, yeah, man, I can't get an hour enough. Into it. She did that. She just liked your face for an hour, or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she wanted to watch. She wanted to. I didn't have my face the on board. the screen. Even better. All I had was a draft board and and the and the queue. That's all I had on the screen. But uh, yeah, just me talking to myself. But appreciate the 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 people uh, active in the comments tonight. You guys are you guys are awesome. They're obviously loving you, Chad. Just bringing the goodness. Um, Dan, you're, you're talking about Marshall, Theo, what, how are you feeling about Carolina? Any, anyone else you're targeting in this, uh, offense or that you're avoiding? No, I mean, I think that, that all the, all the targets, you know, look pretty good. I think that Darnold's an improvement, uh, definitely from a fantasy perspective than we saw with Bridgewater. Um, you know, Darnold will let a rip when he needs to. Um, and he finally has some weapons and I, I've been following the more injury. It sounds like it's a very minor injury. He got hit at practice, and then he tried to warm up, and it tightened up a little bit. But Matt Rule said, you know, if it was like a game, he's going to go. He's a tough player. Um, and it's funny, uh, Dan gets back from having no Wi-Fi for you know five or six days, and we get in the DMs, and, and he's like, what did, what did I miss fantasy-wise? I said, well, Terrace Marshall went from like the 14th round to now he's going to go in every single 10th round because that's been Dan's guy in Dynasty and in, in early draft season. So – Yaris Marshall shooting up. Robbie Anderson's dealing with like a hamstring. So, you know, Marshall's going to see a lot of snaps. He's, you know, he's big and he's physical and he had, you know, 80 plus yards his first game. So he's, he's very interesting. But I think I think all the Carolina weapons are, are in play um, at, at their cost. Uh, I, I, I've been out on Marshall so far, but uh, 
Not because I don't like him. No, I mean, we'll change your mind, right, Dan? We'll change your oh, mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just like a few other players that are around and better to this point. But, uh, but do, you, do you have do you have it? Do you have any in mind? I just got him in the eleventh round. Like, is there someone, uh, Chad, that you prefer over over Marshall? Uh, some guys that I prefer over Marshall that are kind of going around there are yeah. are uh, Callaway and. Shepard and Jacoby Myers. Um, but, you know, even those guys go a little later, so it's like they're kind of in a tier, so I'll take the one that lasts the longest. I don't really care, but Marshall usually goes earlier, and then I'll pick out the one that's left later, you know, and worry about other concerns. So, But maybe I need to reevaluate that a little bit and get, make sure. Sh- make it a point to get him on a, a few teams here and there. God, just a couple of minutes with Dan and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, in the, you'll be reaching for him in the ninth. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully not. But uh, yeah, that's, you know, I, I just love the talent. I love the fact that he's, uh, he's hooked up with his old offensive coordinator again. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of things to like about him and the way he's flashed at camp. Uh, makes, makes me very happy that I've already got some shares under my belt. And, uh, you know, so I can afford to be a little bit more picky coming up. But, you know, of course, part of the thing is, is, you know, you're, you're, you're doing cheaper leagues earlier in the season. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get to, you know, late August and September and you, you still want to make sure that you have shares of the players that you really believe in uh, on those teams. And sometimes it gets a little bit more expensive. So it kind of tests exactly how much do you believe in a, a particular so player. That. So, so how do you just uh, – this is uh, something I was thinking about today, Dan, and I'd like to sit on it just for a couple minutes and pick your guys' brains on it. So how do you how do you play that, Dan? Like if there's someone you were getting earlier in the offseason at a really good value, they keep climbing. Are you saying that your confidence level is basically telling you how high you're going to take them and follow that rise? Or do you say, you know what, I got them at such a value, let everyone else pay this price? How do you play that? I mean, it depends, you know – if it's a tournament that is just now starting, um, you know, nobody has them at that cheaper price. So then I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the same uh, playing field as everybody else. And that means I'm going to have to decide how, you know, just how much do I like him and how far up the board am I willing to chase him? Uh, in some other contests and tournaments that start earlier, um, I might, you know, depending on the player, I might be content to just, you know, take my, uh, you know, my cheap shares and just stick with those. And I might still want to chase them up. But again, I think it really comes down to you need to decide, you know, just where, you know, what's the max value you're willing to to spend on a player and and be willing to stick to those guns. And if the hype gets going faster than that, you've just got to have the discipline to, you know, to back off. Uh you know, that's pretty much the way I play it. Uh, Chad, what's what's your thought on that? Um, I do my best. I, I don't uh, – like I, I saw tonight I was watching a little bit of Todd's video for five minutes or so, um, do, teaching people. And, like, he was blowing my mind with this computer, pulling up how what he's sharing. I don't keep track of it. Is I that try Todd, to- Todd Burrow? Is that our buddy Todd Burrow? Todd from PA. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I don't know what his last name is. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I had to give him a shout out. He's, I, I love Todd. But uh, I, I try to approach it as though every day is a new battle and I try to get my, my cheat sheet caught up and then do the same process that I did the day before and throw caution to the wind on and, and just make the best decisions I can make based on the new, my new ADP sheet. So, so, so does that does that affect your ownership? Uh, like, does ownership percentage play a factor with you? Or are you saying like you go into every draft saying I'm just going to draft the best possible team that day? I'm not worried about what I did yesterday. Um, just my general approach. Um, I don't reach guys up the board very much ever. Um, so I'll naturally get the guys that I like be, by being in so many drafts. Um, so, I guess to answer your question, um, yeah, just go do the best I can the next day. I don't worry about what my ownership percentages are because I don't know what they are. So, whenever your guys fall to you where you want to pay for them, that's you're you're taking them, and that's you you don't care if you grab them three drafts straight. It's, no. Okay. 
Maybe, maybe uh, if I realize, what it will tell me though, when I do my sheet the next day is that maybe my sheet was wrong that day because if there's guys being checked off my sheet, two, three, four spots consistently, and that guy's still left open, then that means my sheet needs to change for tomorrow. That makes yeah. sense. No, for sure. And then I, I'll say that we had this conversation um, when when K Makers went down, and their argument was if Darrell Henderson was going in the tenth, eleventh round, and now he gets pushed up in the fourth round. If you have a bunch of shares in the tenth, eleventh, should you still continue to take him where you value him? And I'll I'll agree with with Chad. Um, first off, a lot of times these injuries happen when the contest is only. 25 30 percent filled you know like with the acres or injury and then second of all the goal is still to to finish in the top you know depending on the the tournament the top two or the top three of your league so do, you, winning your league has to be the goal even if it, if it changes the you know the differentiation of, of your team um and it's like a lot of like you know you see micro rises too like claypool was an eighth rounder now he's going in the end of the fifth early sixth should be was like an eighth, ninth rounder. Now he's going like late fifth. It's like it doesn't it doesn't change anything for me. If there's still the right value to take. I think that you know people get you know too caught up into that. And the goal is to win your league uh, and advance, um, you know, or finish in the top three. So draft the best team you can. I agree wholeheartedly. Hey, right. Every league you're in, the goal is to win that league. You can't win the race if you don't get to the race. Um, in these contests. So, you know, uh, I agree. All right, Chad, I mentioned it kind of in, in my uh, wannabe intro monologue that, that I try to pull off uh, when we do these things. Y you, unlike a lot of us, you're just getting warmed up. And, you know, like Theo mentioned, your, your resume just speaks for itself. The consistency, I mean, is just unheard of. And you're showing me the sheet, you know, in the in the in, the, in my uh, in my screen here that you're using. Uh, it, are you usually waiting till this time of year to to start drafting? And what's your reasoning behind that? Um, one one is I don't uh, I do I get involved in a lot of different things at different times of the year. Um, I'm a big NBA guy, so um, I love the NBA playoffs. Um, I play heavily in, in, at FanDuel and DraftKings in the NBA playoffs. Um, so I don't like worrying about football when, while I'm worried about that. That's enough. And so I, I like uh, when August rolls around, that's when I start doing my research. Obviously, with the days of Twitter now, you can't get away from it. And so I'm able to keep somewhat current on what's going on. But uh, I don't dig in real hard until August 1st, and then I start drafting uh, about August 10th. I had a very tragic uh, death in the family, so I didn't start drafting uh, until about August 16th this year. But but I've done about 50 already in four days, so I'm getting caught up quickly. Sorry to hear that, Chad. Yeah, for sure. Condolences. Yeah. Thank so, uh, Anna is asking uh, a little bit more. You know, what's in what's in that uh, cheat sheet? <laughs> and, you know, it, is it really just ADP uh, for the past, you know, day or two days, or how are how are you putting together that sheet that you're using? Um, I uh, I start with the day befores, and then I I look at um the best ADP there is out there to look at is the NFFC. So I'll, be, I'll use the, the last two days. Uh, this is going to be kind of annoying. Oh, but... the, the live drafts are going. <laughs> I'm on the turn. Uh, so it'll, it'll only happen occasionally. So um, it's a main event too. So this nice. will be fun, but, um, but I won't talk about the draft during this. We won't worry about that. We'll just stick to what you guys wanted to talk about, but uh Lost my train of thought already, but um, the no, she's talking about your, I asking about your sheet. The last two days, online championship drafts, um, and then I, as I do more drafts with smarter players, I'll make 
larger adjustments to it based on who they're taking. So I'm still having a tough time um, tiering players and uh, adjusting the priority level within those tiers on, on who I want. And there's several of them that I'm still struggling with and I'm hoping that I get clarity very soon. So. Yep. Makes sense. The truth. And, and I, I will say, um, you know, I've, <laughs> I've, I've sat next to you at a, a live draft, Chad, and uh, you were doing, I think, three online drafts at the same time. Uh, so your, your ability to multitask is unquestionable. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than mine, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm like, uh, you know, do it, doing this one live draft is, you know, it's not too difficult. And then I'm looking over at what you're doing. I'm like, man, I don't even want to get started in that. <laughs> it's just insane. But it, uh, it, uh, I quit going to live events until I'm done doing that many at a time because it was, uh, it was too much, uh, I feel like an asshole not being able to, to talk to people. And um, I think some people thought I was a dick, which I try not to, to be. Uh, I know we got a spat not too long ago, but I'm over it if you are, Dan. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm definitely over it, man. We're just having uh, fun. But, uh, yeah, I, I would. So I, I uh, one day soon I'll be done doing tons of teams and then, Hopefully this COVID will die down and I'll go out there for the big leagues and have fun again like it used to be. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be with you, Chad. Same. No, and, and Chad has been represented by computer screen in the New York City drafts that I do as well multiple times. So it's uh, always, <laughs> nice, always nice to see, see, see computer, Chad, computer Chad sitting across from you. <laughs> All right. So um, what... Are, are there any particular spots you're really liking um, in redraft this year as far as like, uh, you know, particular spots to draft from, from the 12, from the one, the six, eight, what, what, what's kind of working out well for you so far? Well, I've got about 12 football guys drafts and I always have been in the back half, except I, I had one three pick. The others are all in the back half and most of them deep in the back. And I, it's uh, such a big advantage in the FFPC to have an early spot, in my opinion. Um, the, the places with third round reversal, like NFFC balances it out this year very well, I, I feel like. Um, so I don't mind uh, going, if I don't get McCaffrey, then I don't mind going to the back uh, at the NFFC. Because um, I feel like that third round, about halfway through the round, it starts drying out. So I don't, in the second round, I don't think there's much, a heck of a lot of difference between who you're getting from if you're the 13 pick or the 24 pick. Mm -hmm. Right. It's more like one big tier. Yeah. But there is a big difference in the first round and a big difference in the third round. So I think the FFPC, you do not want to be drafting 12th like I have coming up here in a couple of minutes. Dan, right. Dan, do you mind if I just ask, Chad, you, you talked about the advantage in those early positions. Maybe uh, some of our audience are not as experienced in, in, you know, doing as many of these drafts. What what do you see as the advantages for, for those early positions? Like, meaning what should people be capitalizing on in those spots? You are up next. You are up next. Well, You're asking Dan, right? He's got some picks going. No, that was for you. Did I say Dan? I meant Chad. I thought you said Dan. I'm so sorry. Yeah, do take that one, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> and then well, we'll either one of you. Either one of you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll start. I think, I think uh, you know, you can go a bunch of different ways at the at the two three turn if you've got that early first round pick in the FFPC. Uh, you can grab two great wide receivers. A lot of times, there's uh, still one or maybe even two really good running backs left. Um, you know, so I've been switching it up there. Um, I, I, I will probably go if, if there's a running back, I really like, I'll probably take one of them. Um, but otherwise I'm more than fine. Just taking two receivers there. What, what are you doing there, Chad? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with you. Um, two, two receivers at the two, three turn in FFPC is what you're saying. 
Yeah. Unless yeah. Big Center, Clyde Edwards or Chubb or somebody gets there and that's one of those right. guys or better. Yes. Um, then, then I agree. You are on the um, at some, you, are on you, the you know, at some point you got to just score fantasy football points, right? And yeah. you know, people like their running backs to FFPC because you can play four. But last I knew, the points still need to be put up, and I prefer wide receivers to do that. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's, it's uh, it's funny that you guys should mention that. Cause I had this conversation today with uh, with Austin, who's a friend of the show as well, um, and a great player. But he also brings up the fact that the the end of the fifth round, so the bottom of the third, it's it's sort of a tear break between the you know the two three turn down to the end of the third round. It's a significant drop, and then you also have to deal with the fact that the fifth round, the end of the fifth, um, you know, sort of becomes a flat tier where a lot of guys go. Um, so yeah, FFPC, it's it's you know it's a huge advantage I think to draft in that you know top seven ish. Um, whereas NFFC, it's great getting those nine, 10, 11, uh, you know, 12 picks. Cause you get that, that third round reversal, you get, you know, three really premium players. Um, so no, I completely agree with Chad. It's, uh, you know, in one division, I, I love getting the, uh, the late ones and, and the, uh, the other league, give me the early picks all day. Yeah. It's a, this year, third round reversal works very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, it really balances it out, in my opinion. And things can still change before the real big leagues get here. Um, a couple injuries, and it changes a lot. But uh, that's where I'm at. At the NFFC, if you're at the back half, you get, you know, you could potentially have three really good wide receivers if you want to go that way. Um, and then uh, kind of go from there. But um, I had one question not on the show sheet. When you're setting KDS in an NFFC and you do so many drafts, do you mix up your KDS or is it pretty much the same KDS for every single draft? I do mix it up, uh, but I will, uh, you know, when, when I get to the, the five, 10 and $20,000 leagues, I, I will do what I think's best at that time. I won't uh, mix it up just to mix it up, but if I'm doing 10, 15, 20 prime times, I'll definitely not want to be in the same exact spot every time. For one, if I'm getting the same spot every time, I really am a guy that trusts that my peers know what they're doing. I believe in mass market efficiency, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it tells me that I'm probably doing something wrong if, if uh, you know, if I'm picking the like nine or spot, you know, second or something, and I'm getting it every time, then maybe I need to reevaluate it. Yeah. Dio, were you saying, were you saying KDS? KDS, the Kentucky Derby style. Okay. Um, That's so for, for, for us simpletons, you know, I, just, I, I don't know all the slang. I'm, I'm still learning from you studs, man. So you, so you basically, when, when you register for a draft, you pick your preference um, of the order. So, you oh. know, Chad might Chad might go one, two, twelve, eleven, ten. That's um, awesome. And then so and then so on, and then they do a draw. So you team team one will get his first preference. Team two will get their you know first preference or second pre preference, and so on. So you know it takes a little more strategy um, in terms of you know where do you want to pick. And sometimes it doesn't work out, and you and you get you know preference twelve, but sometimes you get a build exactly how you you'd like it to go. Interesting. It is a very fair way to do it because uh, a lot of times five or six guys will get the spot they wanted um, that would they would have taken first. So, um, yeah. I got one quick question for you guys regarding this. If if I have my speaker volume down, that does not affect my voice level. Is that correct? No, doesn't. So you can still hear me just as clearly. Yeah, when yeah. I the speakers is whatever you're hearing. Okay. Yeah, that's why I just want to make sure that like Dan Dan's hair will still look as awesome as <laughs> <laughs> shout out shout out to the uh, the chat man just before we keep going here uh, we got sports betting man who you got to follow him on Twitter man he's just a he's just a gem uh, so shout out to him guys smash the like Ricky Ortiz Sam Sansalone Casey McCoy just the comment is popping tonight we appreciate all the goodness guys go check out myffpc.com if you're not signed up. Send e any of us, Theo, Dan, or myself, just DM us. Let us know you're new to the site, and we'll hook you up 
uh, with our friends over at the DFFPC for a, a little uh, deposit bonus. Theo, drop, um, drop a cue um, for, for our friend chat here. Yeah, so we, we touched on, um, you know, specific starts. Um, do you see you see any any advantage this year to, you know, potentially zero RB build, um, you know, an anchor anchor RB build? Um, you know, do you see anything early on just by kind of jumping in, um, of kind of the lay of the land, or is that more of you know where where you're picking in the draft? Um, I, I never. Um... I never really have a plan going into any draft. Um, for one, I would never be able to execute it anyway because doing four at a time, you just there's no way. Um, so what my process by doing so many at a time actually helps me do is draft the best players because I, I understand the format of, of the contests that I'm playing at the same time. Um, it, and it helps, it helps me draft uh, – the best players each pick rather than uh, pigeonholing myself into some strategy that somebody that maybe is doing one draft will uh, kind of plan on doing, you know, before the draft. So I'll end up being very wonky, you know, whatever, if I think that the sweet spot of the draft is three running backs in a row, I'll do it. But my preferred strategy in general, um, it changes a little bit between uh, FFPC and NFFC, obviously, but, um, but even in the FFPC, I, I kind of like having um, one running back I can sort of rely on, a first or second round guy, and then four receivers after that, or, or some combination where it's, you know, after five picks, I have one running back and, and four wide receivers. I'd like that the best, you know, I'm more comfortable with those when I'm drafting it, but I won't do it that way just to do it if I don't think it's the right, uh, you know, I'll push the boundaries um, and end up with some wonky things going on. And I think that I have skill enough to recover from it better than a lot of people. And and I also think that it narrows my free agent focus a little bit on those particular teams where I just need to kind of worry about one thing to clean up. Um, but sometimes you're never able to, and, and so I get. Hopefully, that kind of sums it up. One, one, and and uh, four wide receivers at NFFC for sure is like a, how I like to go. Um, FFPC, I'm, I'm more open to hopefully having two running backs in the first five picks. Um, I'll try to. I'll give up a little bit of value at FFPC in the first four or five rounds a little bit of projected points or what have you to get another running back versus uh, a receiver, because I know that the receivers are going to continue to fall throughout the draft. And I'll be able to find spots on guys. I like to fill that out and running back. You're, you're, you're going to have to get lucky with handcuffs to, to make that work if you don't have enough of them. Yeah, and the FFPC especially. I mean, there's just when you're when you're on the waiver wire, there are just never any running backs. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. people get it's, smarter every year, so every handcuffs own. I like you, li unless you like Rashad Penny, because he's just always there by week three. Yeah. <laughs> right, but even this year, uh, I don't know if he'll be there. I mean, it's I, it, it's yeah. just crazy. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a ghost town for running backs, and you know, and and it's. What's gotten different to me in the FFPC is it used to be, you know, that you, it was easier to be a step ahead and say, okay, well, you know, yeah, the backup zone, but I'm going to get the backup to the backup, you know, if I if I think he's got a good chance. And now, you know, even those guys are getting picked up. Uh, and I think it's partially because I, I think people have gotten a lot more comfortable in the FFPC with, uh, you know, that there's almost always a startable wide receiver on the waiver wire. Um, so they're just holding less wide receivers and they're, you know, they're holding more running backs. Is that something you've seen, Chad? Absolutely. And I, I was sort of ahead of the curve at FFPC. I mean, I was fortunate enough to win uh, the inaugural event. And so the, the day I lost the million, I, I uh, was not real happy about it. Uh, 
but I, I'm proud of it now. It was one in the first main event of the FFPC. Obviously, it's a little different now than it was then, but uh, that's still a great accomplishment to have your name on that list uh, at that contest. Um, and back then and still now, um, I'll hardly ever carry more than six wide receivers and a lot of times only five. But now it's to the point where more people are trying to do that. So the running backs, there just aren't any to take at the end of the draft. Yeah. Guys, let's, uh, sorry, guys, let's go to j just quick. Theo, uh, Anna's got a question just with regards to uh, differentiating between season long and best ball. I think that's, uh, you know, something we're all kind of uh, trying to balance right now as we, as we try to fit in all these drafts this time of year, whether it's, you know, one of these big tourneys for five, 500 grand or a hundred grand with the best ball. Um, any, anything Chad with, uh, and his question here that you want to outline for our audience? Um, yeah, I think that, I guess the main takeaway would be the, the, the deep wide receivers. Um, you know, I, I like to have a little bit better running back play and best balls. Cause you, you don't have to choose when these, uh, these uh, explosive guys like Velvet Scantling and those type guys are going to make a play. You know, you know is, is that my mistress I hear uh, in the background? I, <laughs> she, she at your house, uh, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> my wife hears that voice as soon as I turn the laptop on. She's like, Who's that? I'm like, no, don't worry about it, honey. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think that the. Oh, we and I think that the, the, that's the main thing is that the wide receivers, uh, you, you can fill out your back three or four wide receivers with guys that you wouldn't really want to start ever in, uh, no. in traditional no. season long no. leagues. No. And, and so I like to get a little bit better running back play. You don't, I don't feel real comfortable, you know, going to battle with the Madisons of the world in best ball. Whereas mm -hmm. I love them type of guys in uh that's great grammar, Chad. Those type of guys uh, in in full season, you know, it's like where you get to put them in your lineup when you need them. Yep. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. When you when you don't have to choose when to start people, it kind of changes the you know what you're what you're willing to do. And and to me also in best ball, uh, you know, I'm just I'm cognizant of trying to make sure I'm not wasting roster spots. Uh, you know, I, I, I want everybody to be in my lineup, you know, three, four times at least by the end of the year, if at all possible. Whereas in, in season long, I'm more willing, you know, since I do have the waiver wire to work off of, you know, I'm more willing to just, you know, take some real long shot chances. And, you know, if, if that player doesn't pop within the first couple of weeks, you know, I move on and, and grab somebody else, but in best ball, uh, you know, if you, if you have a player that just doesn't pop, uh, you know, you've got a dead file all the way through the season and there's just nothing you can do about it. And a lot of times that will come back to, to haunt you as you start having injuries and everything else coming at you. The, the other thing I would throw in there, and I'm not the most experienced best ball player, but I, I, I think I understand the strategy, the right strategies. I just don't execute it very well. Um, I, I always get suckered into taking quarterbacks too early. Um, mm -hmm. And so guys, like we talked about earlier, Darnold and these types of players um, are just fine. And, and um, you can go to war with three of those type of guys if you want and, and uh, take them a lot later rather than, than wasting a pick. Because one of them is going to put up a decent score every week. Um, you know, yeah. every quarterback is going to score points. And if you have three crappier, you know, ones that, that – one of them's still going to have a good game. Um, if you don't, you just don't have, and you don't have to pick when it's going to be and try to time it, you know. So if I have anything to add, just when in doubt and best ball, and it's a strategy I use in general, season, full season too, is when in doubt, pass on the quarterback. And that especially is true in best balls. And even though I don't do it enough, 
when I'm actually doing the draft. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at uh, Johannes's question. Uh, if someone is, <laughs> is in 60 plus leagues and wins one or two, is it really that impressive in terms of skill? I don't know if she's like talking about one of, you know, she's talking about someone she knows. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to throw this, and I know Theo, you, you, you had something you want to hit on, but like, how do you guys uh, define a successful season? It maybe is is what uh, Johannes is asking. If you're doing 60 plus leagues, you know, which which a bunch of us on this screen are doing. How do you? How do you? you... Up next. Oh, I love that. I love that sound. It's. I, I might have to make it my ringer on my phone. <laughs> But um, oh, that's a slow draft. That wasn't even this one. <laughs> <laughs> you got like twenty of those going during yeah, this live, yeah. live live drafts. <laughs> um, Theo, how do you how do you uh, decide if it's a successful season, whether it's best ball redraft and and dynasty? I know you're you're in all those those different formats. So I think in you know in, in redraft, it's it's got to be your return on your investment. I mean, I think if you're you know, doing a lot of NFFC and FPC and, and those sort of formats for redraft. Um, I think you've, you've got to see some some money coming back, um, you know, at least most years. And, and you know, you want to be a, have it be a profitable season. I think when you start looking at dynasty, there's going to be specific years where you might have a high stakes dynasty team, but you're in, in rebuild mode and you're just going to have to eat it. Um, knowing that you know you might be able to cash in two of the next three years and kind of make up for that for that one particular year, so it's a uh, it's it's a you know it's it's kind of a harsh way of looking at it, but that's truth. It's it's return on investment, and you know there's things like injuries come into play, but when you have a lot of teams, you've got to see somebody coming back. Yeah, I keep score with money. That's how I look at it. That's my <laughs> this is my job. You know, this is a big part of my job. So. Uh, that's the only way I keep score. I, I'm not in it for the accolades and the credentials. I'm in it to make money. So um, that's, uh, you know, having a few, uh, four or so uh, big overall championships is nice, but the money that I won from them w was more important to me. So um, it's all about how much I win or lose that year. And it, luckily I've only had one losing year. but uh, Especially when it's wife changing money, right? Uh, right, Chad? <laughs> Like, yeah, we we had a we had back to back winner seven hundred and fifty genos. I was like, man, you know, like I I wish I could go to my wife with that and say, honey, look what I did with all those hours and those nights that you uh you know <laughs> sat in bed to watch watch the the housewives or whatever it was, and I was doing football stuff. Yeah, look at what we got out of it. But um, yeah, apologize to Johannes. Uh, from now on, you're Joe. From now on. All right, well, kind of uh, moving into the difference between what Chad's doing and, uh, you know, what, what a more, you know, like most people are doing. Uh, you know, a lot of people are not out there doing, uh, you know, 20, 30 main events or something like that. Uh, you know, they're out there doing one, two, maybe three or four, but, you know, not that many main events. What, Chad, what is the difference in your strategy, uh, you know, that, you're doing right now and how how does that relate to somebody who's just doing a, a handful or less of main events would, would you recommend that they do the same things as you or are there are things that you would recommend they do differently than you how, how would you approach that if you just had you know just a, a you know a few bullets in the chamber uh that's a good great question i've been asked that you know it's not the first time but uh what I would say is that the principles are somewhat the same. Um, you don't want to reach guys up like three quarters of a round because there's a chance that they could come back to you on the next pick. Um, so I would never take it that far if I was in that spot where, but that's assuming they even know what, where people are going, which you might not. Um, but you, you got to take guys you're, you're comfortable with and are going to have fun with if you only have a few teams. Um, you know, there's no place for taking a guy uh, just because he falls if you don't like him when you only have three, four, five teams where I have the luxury to do that, you know, um, to get a few shares here and there when it's out of line where I'm getting them. Um, so there's, advantage, uh, there's advantages by having a lot of teams in that way. Um, especially the way I do it. 
Um, you know, like I, I can, like I never reach for guys really. Um, cause I, I let the guys I like come natural to me and I'm able to do that by having a lot of teams. I'm going to end up with plenty of shares of them, uh, naturally versus pushing them up. Whereas guys that have three to five teams or gals, um, I would be more, uh, you know, if they're confident in a player, then, then they can push him up a little bit. What, what, what's a lot of teams, Chad? Give me, give me like a like a ballpark, a little, little ballpark action. Um, I uh, in 2019, I had about well, including best balls, I had about 350. Because <laughs> your draft was running that, right, that damn. Contest. Oh yeah, yep. So. About 200 redraft teams. And... Wow. That's not me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for, that, for that's you, the, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the Goat District air horn chat. That's okay. that's okay. air horn. Give me some props. Give me some exactly. props. And, and my friend Joe just, you know, expressing the same feeling. Oh, my God, WTF, you know? <laughs> hey, by the way, a real quick thing I forgot to mention when we, we – when I told that FFOC story about the million bucks, that's where I met Dwayne McFarland. Actually, he qualified for the final 15 as well. So oh, wow. we became friends out there and we, uh, I don't talk to him as much as I wish I did, but, uh, great guy. So I just he's, he's an awesome guy. We've had him twice now on the show. Thanks to, to Theo, just bringing in the goodness and Dan, and, uh, we've had amazing guests and he's, he's definitely one of my favorites. Just a, a really nice guy all around. And and smart, smart, very smart, smart, as the kids yeah, say and, these days. And if anybody wants to read Dwayne's uh, work, um, you know he's full time at PFF right now, and he's been dropping some awesome right. articles. So so definitely definitely give it a look. Um, you know, for the, some they have some other great stuff, I'm sure. But Dwayne is worth the price of admission. Yep, absolutely. Sorry to yep. throw that tangent out there, but. One, one of the things you were kind of talking about, Chad, was, um, you know, when you were talking about the difference between, you know, what you're doing and somebody who's with the fewer teams is doing, you know, and you were, you were talking about the importance of discipline, uh, you know, for yourself, just, you know, not reaching for guys and, and uh, you know, letting things fall to you. And, you know, I think that that that's still a skill that translates even if you just have a few teams is just being disciplined like that and not not making crazy reaches now um, you know and you did touch on that as well but you know i think i think discipline has a lot to do with being successful in fantasy football because it's just too easy to get out over your skis and you know you're 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 trying to to do too much with the team instead of just let it come to you uh, thoughts now, on that we're on the clock yeah, you pretty much just summed it up. I mean, you, you, I keep it as simple as it, it possibly can be. I mean, I draft guys when um, they come to me and they're, that, I'm in a position to get them. And, and just people would be amazed at how much, I mean, people are amazed by my record, but they'd be more even amazed that my record of success has just come by a, doing things consist consistently and letting guys fall to me and, and then picking them off. And uh, I don't worry about stacking and all that too much. Um, I, I was going to ask you if, uh, you know, hashtag always be stacking. What are your thoughts on that? Is that something you care about? Obviously not, right? N uh, and not, not, I'll let it break a tie occasionally, but okay. uh, no, not really. I mean, I think, it, I think another, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. It just gets in. It's, it, it goes against what my uh, thought process is that, that seems to work for me. Um, I'm, on, I'm at the turn. I'll be right back with yeah. you guys. Yeah. Uh, Chad, what works for you works for us. So d d just anything you want to share. All right, I'm good now. Um, <laughs> stacking. Um, so, you know, if, if I – you know, I was doing an online championship last night, and and naturally it came to me where I had Cooper, it, well, I had Lamb and Cooper in the second and third round. Um, they came naturally; they were the right pick, uh, pretty obvious picks. Or excuse me, the third and fourth rounds, not second and third rounds. Oh, nice! Yeah, um, very nice. And so I decided that 
I would prioritize press pushing Prescott up just a skosh earlier, but I still wouldn't make it a reach. And he ended up coming very naturally um, in the sixth round, right at the right time in the NFFC for him. So I, I would uh, be cognizant of it, but but not. Uh, but the stack has to kind of unfold naturally. I won't reach for a stack similarly to how I won't reach for a player in general. So, Dan and Theo, I'm sure that was that was that. where you got to survive with some serious stuff late on late in these contests. Best balls are a little different story. I thought uh, there was one other take one other takeaway that uh, that you know a, a regular player that's playing only a few leagues could take from Chad is um, like you brought up with the the Callaway Myers tier where you might like that group of guys a little bit um, more than their ADP does not mean that you know you have to take them two rounds earlier you can you can kind of use ADP as a map to see where you have to reach to get your guys. Um, and, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do anything crazy and you can figure out where you might be able to get two guys from a tier um, instead right. of one just by just by following. I thought that was a great, great takeaway by Chad. Yeah, that's exactly what I try to do is uh, you just don't if you, if you if you leave the guy behind, even if you might like him just to skosh more, if there's a chance that he's that he could fall back to you. And later in the drafts, you never know what can happen. It happens a lot more in the later part of the drafts. Um, then uh, I'll always take that chance because um, I'll get that player enough naturally, you know, where I won't have the options that I do in that particular draft. So, um, yeah, just I, I, I mean, one thing that I, one story I, I, I relate to that makes me believe that my process works is when I had a huge, I don't play fantasy baseball anymore, but when I did, um, the last year I did, I, I won the NFBC primetime. And I was, they had 18 leagues and I was in 17 of them. And I did it this way and, and, and never reached for a player the whole time. And uh, by getting guys later in every draft than they were going in the whole contest in general, I ended up with about six or seven of the top tens and won the contest. So that tells me that the process works. Um, but, but you also, I, you know, then I also think that you have to be great at free agency and managing your team in the season, making good starting lineup decisions and all that. And I think those are big strengths of mine. Um, but, but, uh, Keep it simple and and take guys um, around where they're going. You, who's to say you're even going to be right on your opinions anyways, that one guy's so much better to be leaping him up over six or seven guys um, when there's a chance you could get him in the next round if things break your way. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, also an important lesson is just to have a little humility about, uh, you know, how, how good you are at picking players. Uh, you know, I, we all think we know things, but uh, we probably know less than we think we do. And, and to that, uh, to that end, uh, Anna was asking, do, does Chad have a no draft list? Are there players that you just won't draft even, you know, if they fall or do they have to fall really, really far for you to draft? Or, you know, how do you, how do you feel about that? I have every player on my list, um, mm -hmm. but in reality, I'm not, I, but like, like Nelson Sousa, for example, he's a good friend of mine. Um, his list probably has about 15 guys at each position or something. No, it's probably more than that, but you get the point. Um, you know, he's, he's got a huge list of guys. He just won't take. It doesn't matter where he, where they fall, how far they fall. Um, and his approach works for him. And mine works for me. And when we partnered up a while back, it was two of each of our worst years. <laughs> um, it was That's... like a clash of the, the styles. And we met in the middle and it, that did not work. Um, so, so play to your strengths. Definitely. Then, huh? Yeah. Um, I got a cool story though, uh, regarding Nelson and I's partnership. Um, if you want me to throw yeah. it in there now or later, but, yeah, um, go for it. 
<laughs> so we were drafting in the in the uh, 10k diamond league um at the time the biggest league around at the nffc and we just had a juggernaut brewing um from the one hole and uh so there's a break it after round eight and so in third round reverse so we let off round eight right and then there must have been a powwow or something because we didn't have a quarterback yet, and I'd never seen anything like it. They come out of the break, and everybody in the, on the way back to us took their second quarterbacks. <sighs> um, and Nelson and I are like, what in the hell is going on here? This is not cool. Um, we, you know, but we didn't let it show. But anyway, we, we barely made the playoffs somehow and it was because of a one dollar bid i mean we we're going to war with like Kerry collins um who's that jake Plummer. these these guys man it was brutal so our team was so good but we just couldn't get quarterback play nelson three weeks ahead of of the team tim tebow curve he goes dude we just got to get this guy on our team just in case we can't be any worse at quarterback and so he he bid one dollar on Tebow, and that Tebow actually got us barely into the playoffs, and then we won the playoffs with Tebow leading the way. Um, it was quite fun and quite an amazing one dollar bid by Nelson, and that frankly saved our ass that year. We barely were profitable after winning whatever that paid for first. So that was a fun little story, but yeah, for sure, and then awesome. and that just kind of points out the the importance of quarterback in the NFFC because you know in the FFBC I, I you know I don't I don't worry about quarterback too much in the NFFC uh, that can come back to bite you because people will definitely be taking the quarterbacks earlier all the way through uh, so when you're you have to make that mental adjustment between the the two formats yeah it's so funny every every time somebody would pick they'd like look down at our end of the table when they would take that second quarterback <laughs> What the hell's going on here? <laughs> but uh, it was it was really rewarding to win that way. Um, you should have, I can't even remember all the bad quarterbacks we had. It was Kerry Collins was the worst. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a hard one to stomach. He's bringing the hits with the, with these, with these <laughs> quarterbacks, man. These Buffalo quarterbacks. Uh, our, our friend uh, friend of the show, sports betting man, asking an interesting question. Any crazy rules of thumbs for putting weight on late season, nice weather or indoor or easy matchups? I, I uh, don't weigh it personally. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I quite frankly just don't have time to worry about it. Doing so many drafts at a time. That's I got to eliminate some things and that's one of them. Bye weeks is one of them. I don't worry about those either. Um, figure it all sort itself out if I have the best players on my team, you know. Theo, I feel like Chad's reinforcing something I talked to Andrew about last night. Just like sometimes I feel like as fantasy players, we complicate things. We we talk ourselves out of things that are just logical, you know, because we're putting like, especially in the off season, right? There's nothing going on. So you're putting so much thought into these things. Um, anything to add yourself with regards to uh, to the question to sports betting man? No, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, if, if it's, yeah. it's a tiebreaker, like in the playoffs, getting those dome games is nice. So you don't have to worry about, you know, a Buffalo kicker, that sort of thing. You can kind of, you know, take a look at, you know, the matchups if you know you're going to make playoff in that playoffs in that last waiver wire run. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do that. I think with kickers, it's probably the easiest position to do that with. No. Um, if you, if you want to, you want to go with that, it's really hard in a competitive league to, to find, um, you know, guys late in the season, um, you know, on the waiver wire. Um, and maybe it factors in your start set decisions, but yeah, I don't, I don't worry about it too much. Um, other than the kicking yeah, game. You are on the clock. Yeah. yeah Dan, you're, you're a kicker guy. I, as we all get <laughs> excited here with those, the, you know, my mistress in the background, um, other than kicker, Dan, any of this play, play a factor in your decision-making? I mean, when I'm making my decisions, uh, you know, 
week to week, yeah, uh, those kind of things can come into play. But uh, as far as like when I'm drafting, I I tend to go a little bit more down uh, Chad's road, which is just, you know, take good players on good teams and let the rest of it sort itself out. Um, you know, if I, if I put myself in a position to win, uh, you know, and get it, you know, make the playoffs and anything can happen from there. That's, that's basically how I see it. Yeah, I, I agree. You got, I mean, you got to get there. I mean, some of the teams I've won main events with had some weird guys on it. Like, um, uh, I know one time, uh, when I won the FFWC, like Marcus Colston, nobody made the playoffs that had him. He had a bad year and then he got hot in the, in the playoffs and I had him on my team and, 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 you know, Derek Henry, a couple, three years ago, um, teams rode that wave to wins as well, you know? Um, so just you just get in there and then and then let the chips fall. I, that's my only goal in any league is to just do as well I can in it and try to qualify and then just see what happens. Um, Chad, Chad, one of our audience, uh, this this guy Goat District, saying, uh, you know, trying to quote you here. Some of some of my teams that I've won the main event with. I mean, Dan, if I can ever say that sentence to you, please, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be in a good space. And that St. Martin dreams of ours uh, might be a little closer than we thought. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no doubt about it. I had a waiver so, wire question. Um, Chad, are you, and I, you know, again, your, your waiver wire, like you said, I mean, you're probably, you know, focusing on the, the higher stakes teams, but are you a spend it to go get a guy early that you might have, you know, 10 usable weeks for him? Or are you a guy that wants to keep some fab in your back pocket to maybe make those kind of killer week, killer moves in like weeks 11, 12, uh, you know, 13? I I love controlling the, the bidding down the stretch when carnage starts taking place. Um, um, now, I, I mean, some of the best players that I think there are, in my opinion, take a complete different approach. I think Mike Santos is uh, – arguably the best player. I, I, if I had to bet on anybody winning a league, it would be him probably uh, over myself for sure. Um, I respect him so much, and he is very, very aggressive if he sees a difference maker. And it's amazing how many times he's right, um, even though he overspends a little bit on the player sometimes to make sure he gets him. Um, he, he, I, uh, I like controlling it down the stretch, though, and – that's led to some of my main event wins were carried by that. Having um, money to spend on a Damian Williams a, a couple of years ago um, on the very last bidding uh, period on that last Friday. Now that's a little different because you're only saving like two bucks for that last Friday move. But so that's probably a little different than what we're generally talking about. But um, that's just an example of what can happen late though. Um, and I like to be able to get the guys that are going to have a big role just by there's nobody other left at running back to play much than them. Is there a percentage, Chad, that you're trying to keep for, for that later spot? No, I mean, everything's different. I'll put price enforcing bids out on every player. And so by being in a lot of leagues, I'll slip some, some of those guys through the cracks for cheaper money anyway. Um, yeah. That's another benefit of a, night, of a lot of teams. But um, the other thing I will say is that, um, you know, if my team's, you know, one and three in a head-to-head -head type league or in the bottom three or four in points in the NFFC where that's pretty much how it works to get into the, the race, um, and I see a guy that can help my roster, then I'll go big because – I don't need any money if I don't if I'm eliminated by week ten. Makes sense, right? You unload the barrel where uh, you got to you got to ship the chips in, right? When when you need to. Yeah, yeah. If you if you don't make the playoffs, um, you you're wasting your time anyway. So uh, I'll do whatever it takes to stay in the playoff hunt as long as I can, and I'm yep. I'm pretty adept at making do with short money if that 
case arises. Um, so whatever, it just depends on how the team's doing. And fortunately, it seems like usually I'm, I'm able to be in a position on a on a fair amount of my teams where they're in decent shape. So I don't have to blow the wide on uh, early guys, but uh, and just do price enforcing type bids predominantly. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I won't say how I know this, but uh, it's amazing sometimes the guys you can sneak through for a dollar or two, uh, you know, around like week eight or later, uh, just because yeah, half yeah. of the league is quit paying attention. Yeah. Dan, Dan's good at being uh, economical on, on the waiver wires, and that's what I appreciate being a, a co-owner with him in these uh, FFPC leagues because uh, – you know, sometimes you get excited and Dan's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's it, it, it's something about co owning a team with you, JD, because I mean, in my own, you know, like my my leagues I run on my own, I tend to be, you know, like a, a David Hubbard. I'm I'm just like basically, you know, opening up the wallet and saying, take my money. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it. It's it's it. Left it's right. Then you try to act all fancy with me, right? It's okay. That's good. <laughs> He takes it a little extreme though, and leaves himself like a dollar with four weeks left. <laughs> right? Yeah. He could leave four dollars, Dave. <laughs> and his defense on a buy in championship week, you know, he's like, "Yep, I got this." Yeah, that's that's just how Dave rolls. So, I mean, gotta respect it. He's he's done well too. So, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, JD, we should probably uh, we should probably put in a plug for uh, Viridian, huh? Let's do it, man. I mean, you know, I got I got the I got the the goods right here. We got the uh, the Goat District gear. Whether you're looking at uh, hats, t-shirts, I'm pretty picky when it comes to clothes and uh, everything. Everything I've gotten. Shout out to Will and Mark uh, that are that put this together. And guys, you're listening to us. Whatever other podcasts you listen to, most likely their goodness is on there. So go check them out. We we have the pleasure of uh, offering you the the goat gear on there, uh, hoodies, t-shirts, hats, like every kind of hat you can even think of. Guys, go check it out. Support the show. It's comfortable, quality stuff. If you're not happy with it, let me know. I don't doubt that you're going to love it. And then they got this other other section of the site. You know, if, if you're big on Gibby or Akers or whoever it is, I know Akers hurt, but whoever your favorite player is, Chenault, they have a T-shirt for that player. And it's awesome because you're not finding that anywhere else, guys. So go check out breedingglobal.com. Go to forward slash collections, forward slash goat district to get the goat gear. There's something in there you're going to love. I guarantee it. Guys. We've uh, we've held Chad for one thirty. I mean, that's what we do on the show. Theo went on a show that usually runs under an hour, and we took it to two hours. So that's that's just <laughs> how we roll here in the district, right, Theo? We just crashed that party and said we're camping here for the night, right? It was it was two hours with the Dynasty Bros talking AFC East players. So These guys are awesome. We we went deep. We went deep with that one. No, yeah, they're they're good guys. So we're you know we kept going. But no, it was, uh, it was know, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We, we we know Chad is in the middle of of his. You know, he's he right now. He's this is his season. You know, he he already did his training. He's this is prime time right now. So, do we have any questions left before we close this out that we missed so far that we haven't addressed? We went off track, on track. We went all over the place. You know, we were we were on our dirt bikes on this one. Uh, anything we missed, Dan or Theo? I no, mean, I think I. I think we I think we hit a hit on a ton, on a ton of stuff um and and Chad was very generous with his time and yeah we loved having you on here Chad it was just awesome man yeah my pleasure it was a, it was a lot of fun I'll be uh, listening more often now I I didn't uh, I mean I, I mentioned I'm not a big podcast guy but this day and age I need to be there's so much good stuff out there I just need to find what they all are because like I, I listen to Dwayne's stuff and um, that's about it. So I need to uh, explore what else is out there. There's probably uh, others very smart, like like you all. So um, our, our buddy sport sports. I get thing, your, I have you guys tweet me, uh, message me a few others I should check out. Oh yeah, for no, sure. No, you yeah. you got it for sure. We totally will, uh, Chad. Before we close this out, our buddy sports sports betting man just throwing throwing a little more Guinness on the fire here, real quick, rapid fire. That is not surprising. Rapid fire. He's a, he's a good dude though. Uh, right. The 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 New Orleans back uh, quarterback situation has definitely been a situation all off season. 
right now, Peyton, Sean Payton uh, tonight saying that Jamison is starting week one, Monday night against the Jaguars. How do you feel about it? The, the Saints play Monday night to open the season against the Jets. Sorry, it might, it, it might just be a preseason, but... Yeah, I think it's just Is that a preseason? preseason? Okay. Pre- so it's a preseason game. Yeah, preseason. Does, okay, does that, that, that means you- nothing to me. They, they gave Hill the first chance last game. Maybe it was a planned thing to give them both the start. And Do you have a favorite football. out of the two right now? As a, from a fantasy perspective, I have uh, more... Uh, I think Hill would be a very adequate player. Um, okay. Yeah. If if he was the full time quarterback, I have less interest in Winston. Um, if he is, I just don't believe in the weapons, and and they're not a bad team. Like he's not going to be slinging the ball fifty times, not worrying about interceptions like he was at Tampa. So I loved him at Tampa as a fantasy quarterback. Um, but this is a little different story, and and his weapons aren't very good, really. Anna disagrees for 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 that one situation in New Orleans, but I know she agrees, and everyone else in this. The chat's been on fire tonight. Like we appreciate. I know Dan and Theo uh, and Chad. I'm sure. Like from Joe to Casey to, to to our boy sports betting man, you guys have been awesome. Anna just rocking the the comments. Chad, you've been amazing tonight. We appreciate all the goodness. You know, like someone said earlier, I think Casey said. We appreciate how transparent you are, and that's what we love about having, uh, you know, the elite coming on. It, it's just how open you guys are, and we appreciate all that goodness, man. You betcha. Yeah, Dan. absolutely. Yeah, Dan, I was going to say, uh, t- tonight was special. Uh, you, you set this up. I want to thank you. I'm, I'm sure the audience is, is thanking you. Anything that you want to add uh, or close this thing out, you know, as, as we uh, tie the knot? on this thing well i i got to give the props to theo on this he was he was the one who put it together but uh you know my bad my bad theo please <laughs> no, please don't hit me no, you you, you are good. the man yeah. theo is that's the man I, yes yeah theo, theo theo uh coming up with the heavy hitters for sure and uh we we definitely appreciate that and uh you know it's it's just always great to just be able to talk to people like chad just kind of pick their brains a little bit um you know it, and if you're not following Chad on Twitter, you definitely ought to be. I mean, you know, you, you, you put a lot of stuff out there. Uh, you know, you're not afraid to, you know, to, to get in there and, uh, you know, and say what you really feel. Uh, I appreciate the genuineness that you put out there on Twitter every day. Some people uh, and that's, don't. <laughs> well, I know some people don't, but I mean, that's to me, that's what it's all about is, uh, you know, you're, you're just out there being you. And, uh, you know, it, th- those are the kind of people that I really appreciate uh, more than anyone else. So so thank you for that. Guys, check him out. Uh, really a gem in fantasy land. And I find the uh, similar to diamonds, right? You got to work for them. A lot of these gems are, are hard to find. They're, they're not the ones that are screaming on the mountaintop, uh, you know, out there in Twitter land. Twitter land. That, that's kind of my, my take. Uh, and Chad is a, a perfect example of that, the, the goodness he brought tonight. Theo, uh, appreciate, you know, from Chad to, to Dwayne, I mean, you, you've brought a new level uh, to this channel and, and we love you for it, brother, in, in every way. I mean, I love hanging with you. I love DMing with you. Um, anything you want to close this out with, whether it's a, a little tip for the audience, a little message to Chad, anything at all, brother? No, I think that if you enjoyed listening to, to Chad tonight, um, we've had some of the most successful um, fantasy football players in the country on this summer. Uh, we've prided ourselves with balancing out, having great analysts with, that, with great players. Um, so, you know, it's draft season. Go back and re-listen to this one. You can re-listen to our pod with a B-Bag Batoba, a back-to-back football guys winner. We had Chris Vaccaro on. Uh, we had Nelson Sousa on. Um, we've had some of the best, uh, the best Bill Wachowski was on. <laughs> Um, you know, we've had some of the best players around. So go re-listen to some of these pods when you're preparing for your season. There's a lot of takeaways you can you can take from some of these very successful players and use it in your own drafts. And, yeah, I love this this draft tonight. And, uh, you know, like I said, two weeks from now, New York City drafts, it doesn't get better than this time of year if you're a fantasy football grinder. This is when it, when it all comes together. So uh, this was a great, great, great show. And um, this Tuesday we have Zachary Kruger from Rotoviz coming on. Um, that should, he should be a great guest. Um, we have Scott Pianow from Yahoo coming on on the 31st. Um, and then we have a, a few more 
um, of of Andrews um, Half Billy's shows. We're going to be doing a, uh, a main event um, review um, probably sometime this weekend, if not early next week. Uh, I'm seeing uh, my my new friend Joe and my new friend Anna just connecting, and it's making me feel all tingly inside just just feeling good the community that that's building here in the district and uh, guys keep coming out for the live events we're gonna keep bringing the goodness chad was no different tonight and uh I, I'm, i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this on the board here are you not entertained are you not entertained I love i love i love that scene i love that movie <laughs> Guys, it, it's that time of year, right? We're uh, we're getting our rosters ready. We're getting everything ready. So you you want to stay tuned to this channel at this time. It, it's crucial time. You want to get your rosters ready. You're not finding guys like Chad all over the place. Like we said, he's keeping it low pro, but he's keeping it in the district. We appreciate him. I appreciate Dan and Theo on the weekly more than I can say. Guys, smash the like. Smash the subscribe. If you're not on top of everything we offer your league mates are and you're in big trouble so that's all i gotta say man we'll check you all later goat district you know the pope listens dynasty our religion for the blokes missing on all of these trades on all of these plays on all of these grades by the end of the day y'all getting played so what you gonna do next try to fill up that flex send the homie a text that trash offers the best you try to make it complex then they text you back now all of a sudden they don't make any sense <laughs> broaden your horizons boy dynasty's not for the simons boy Trade's not for consignment, boy. Respect your opponent, y'all some piranhas, boy. This is my advice from me to you. Open up your cute little podcast queue. Search up G-O-A-T District, my dude. Pop it in your ear, man. Y'all know what to do. It's the... And I'll always be traded. And I'll always be traded. And I'll always be traded. Y'all try to betray them, but first you gotta bait them. Fish, 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 fish.